All right, let's get this started. Today, today is February 1st, 2017, and I want to begin a series of videos called Reformation Profiles. Within these Reformation Profiles, one of the things that I want to do is recognize the contribution of those uh, from the Reformation within church history who made great contributions to the church. Also, February is Black History Month. So I had the grand idea to merge these two ideas together. Reformation profiles for February are going to focus specifically on those from an African-American perspective uh, who made great contributions either to the church or in the history of the Reformation. And so over the next month, every day, Monday through Friday, I'm going to come with these short videos profiling, highlighting the lives of certain individuals that I want to encourage you to look up, to study, and to read about. Quickly before we have our first profile, many do not understand the basics of the Reformation. I can sum up the Reformation in 10 principles sitting on one solid foundation. Those 10 principles are salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, according to the scriptures alone, to the glory of God alone. Secondly, those second set of principles of the ten is the tulip, the acrostic, which stands for total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and the persever perseverance of the saints. They rest upon one strong, solid foundation which is the sovereignty of God. Everything in Reformed theology stands or falls upon the sovereignty of God. And if you ask me if I had to stand or fall upon anything, it would be the sovereignty of God. So, Reformation Profiles today, we're going to focus on a man by the name of Lemuel Haynes. Lemuel Haynes was a man born in 1753. July 18, 1753, in West Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, Lemuel, interestingly enough, probably was not his given birth name by his mother and father. Lemuel was abandoned immediately after birth. Yet, a man by the name of Mr. Haynes took this young child into his home and gave him his name, Haynes, and then also gave him his first name of Lemuel, and interesting in love, Lemuel signifies being consecrated to God. And if you read over the life of Lemuel Haynes, one of the things that you recognize is the fact that the hand of God was all over the life of Lemuel Haynes. Five months after Mr. Haynes brought Lemuel into his home, he then bonded him off into a man by the name of David Eos who was a deacon in Greenville, Massachusetts. David's, deacon David's reputation was one of being recognized as a man of singular piety. And again, as you look throughout the life of Lemuel Haynes, you see and you understand that the hand of God not only was on his life, but continually moved Lemuel throughout his life. Some quick profiles uh, about Lemuel's life. In the early years, he had a formal education, and Lemuel developed a great passion for reading books. He especially loved to read the Bible. That's what all Christians ought to have, that sort of passion. He also loved to read books on theology. It was said of Lemuel by his biographer, biographer that Lemuel kept the Bible a Psalter, a spelling book, and a few sermons always with him to read. This was the passion that Lemuel had in order to learn. It was uh, Lemuel made this particular statement here that I found quite interesting. Lemuel Haim said this, I was constantly inquiring after books, especially in theology. I was greatly pleased with the writings of Watts, and Doddridge, and with Young's Knights. My good master encouraged me in the matter. Lemuel Haynes 
develop this passion for reading amazingly while he was a slave. And his slave master encouraged him to read. That's the hand of God upon the life of Lemuel Haynes. Another instance in the life of Lemuel Haynes, he eventually enlisted into the army mm -hmm. in 1774. And during this time, he wrote a lengthy sermon, not even yet a minister, but he wrote this sermon, as it were. Uh, it was written in April of, 18, uh, April of 1775, and it was about the Battle of Lexington. This particular poem or sermon, if you will, was titled, Lemnell, a young mulatto who obtained what little knowledge he possesses. This particular poem was written and it emphasized the conflict between slavery and freedom. Interesting enough, interesting enough, this particular address did not address directly African slavery, but simply address slavery. Haynes, however, did have a very strong opinion about slavery. Nearly 150 years after his death, a manuscript of a sermon that Haynes preached in 1776 was discovered and then transcribed. In this particular sermon, Haynes boldly states this, that an African has an undeniable right to his liberty. This particular treaty went on to condemn slavery as sin and pointed out the irony of slave owners who were fighting for their own liberty from the British while denying that particular right of freedom to others. Lemuel Haynes was a very, very bold preacher. Lemuel Haynes has a ministry to where he spoke boldly and profoundly. As a matter of fact, Haynes was called to the ministry and that calling was very evident. He was called very early in his ministry to a congregational meeting house in Middleville, in Middle Gainesville. Haynes there labored for five years preaching the gospel and they said it was recorded that he did this with great zeal. During these five years, he preached in a time that is much like America today. Lemuel Haynes preached at a time where it was said there was moral darkness, there was uh, insane profanity, infidel infidelity was on the rise, strange doctrines intruded the church. But Lemuel Haynes, for those five years, preached boldly like a rock, even as a young minister, and stood firmly for his Lord and for his faith. Lemuel Haynes would go on within the ministry in 1785 and was ordained as a congregational minister in the United States, 1785. He was ordained in mainstream Protestant church as a, as a, a man of African descent within America in 1785. I simply emphasize that and repeat that because of this great achievement that I want to again recognize that the hand of God was on the life of Lemuel Haynes. And you can tell that just as his name signified being consecrated to God, he was indeed that, consecrated to God and to serve him. Lemuel Haynes served three different times as a pastor after being ordained. Listen to this. In Torrent, Connecticut, his first pastor was an all-white congregation. Again, 1785. Lemuel Haynes, as an African, served an all-white congregation in Torrent, Connecticut. Eventually, after two years, there were prejudice, and he eventually left. But then he was called again to his second pulpit ministry uh, for, from, for a mostly white church in Rutland, Vermont. There, again, this church was mixed with both uh, white congregants as well as it was said a few poor Africans. Yet, he lasted there at this particular church for 
30 years. That's the ministry. That's the endurance of Lemuel Hain during the time of slavery. Lemuel Hain ministered under the mighty hand of God. Lemuel Haynes eventually in 1833 passed away at the young age of 80. But there are a couple of very interesting things I want to share with you before I end this short video of this profile of Lemuel Haynes. He preached several sermons that are still transcribed that you can find. But one very interesting sermon was called Universal Salvation. Now to those who are familiar with the Reformation, you're familiar with reformed theology you would understand that universal salvation might mean something that might go against reformed theology but not actually search out the sermon the text that he read from that particular morning came from genesis chapter 3 and he read verse number four this was his text the serpent said to the woman you surely will not die. That was his text. Let me tell you the surrounding of this particular uh, sermon. Lemuel Haynes, actually, that particular morning, was actually supposed to be at another church and preaching for that particular congregation. That congregation called him and asked him not to come. Then Lemuel Haynes found out why he was asked not to come. He had been replaced with another minister who basically taught very faulty doctrine. So Lemuel Haynes was upset. He was angered because this, I'm going to say charlatan, was put before God's people when Lemuel Haynes, who was consecrated to God, who had the hand of God on his life, was denied the opportunity to go and to preach the gospel in that particular congregation. I encourage you to look that sermon up by Lemuel Haynes called Universal Salvation. This, salva uh, this particular sermon uh, can be documented um, in a book called An Entertaining Controversy by a man by the name of William Fay. This particular book was published in 1807, but you can look it up and you can find it yourself. This particular sermon, after reading it, I'll just say that I found great encouragement from this particular sermon because Lemuel Haynes did not hold back one bit. Lemuel Haynes gave a strong objection to the fact that he was called and told not to come and preach and this other individual was allowed to preach when this person was not of sound doctrine. I can say that Lemuel Haynes have greatly impacted my view upon ministry for several reasons. For the times in which he lived, for the time in which he ministered, and the places that this African man actually ministers in during the time in which Lemuel Haynes ministered. At the end of his life, Lemuel Haynes was regarded as he was no ordinary man. That's who he was known as. Clearly, you can see that the hand of God was on the life of Lemuel Haynes. Clearly, you can see that he was a man consecrated to God. This particular Reformation profile about Lemuel Haynes has greatly encouraged me that even I myself might consecrate myself to God and might boldly stand for my Lord and for my faith, regardless of the present day circumstances that I find myself in, I find great encouragement in Lemuel Haynes, who stood, who preached the gospel, and who served God. Even in that day of slavery, the Revolutionary War, or the British War, whichever war that was, he stood firm, he served his country, and he served his God. I simply pray that these Reformation profiles will be an encouragement to you that it will be an encouragement to your faith and that you will set your life aside unto god and live for him thank you please join me tomorrow for our second reformation profile focusing on african americans who made an impact 
in the Reformation or in the church itself. Thank you, and God bless.